Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope. Thank you for joining me. Today we're taking a look at Die in the Dungeon by Fundamental Games. This is a primarily solo dungeon experience where instead of being an adventuring party, driving down into the tunnels, working and doing your very best to slay the mighty beast, the dragon or the cyclops or whatever it is, you are in fact playing the monster doing your very best to explore, upgrade, uh, gain your dice-chucking abilities so that by the time it comes to the adventuring party, you do your very best to wipe their puny and uh, meandering existence off of the dungeon walls so that you can escape or gain the treasure or do whatever you prefer to do as a monster. Now, this is a game that is coming to Kickstarter this week. I believe it is launching in about two days from you viewing this, and you might be wondering why I'm covering or releasing content early. And no, it's not because this is the only thing I'm doing and I figured I'd, I'd put it out ahead of time. Uh, instead, I was sent a little bit of a bonus thing along with this game, and I figured I would cover it ahead of the curve as a way to learn and celebrate and share some gameplay uh, and then I'll have my full preview or my full kind of preview and gameplay mixture coming out on the day of the Kickstarter's launch. So stay tuned. There'll also be a link down below where you can connect with Die in the Dungeon. You can potentially swing over to our Discord if you want to playtest this and get it up and running with the designer. I know he's been really active over there. Uh, but this is going to be my venture into uh, a, a sort of beginner. I, I, I'm scared of saying that because if I lose, it sounds really bad. But a beginner dungeon... Uh, here to see if I can defeat a single level one adventuring party. I mean, it can't be that hard, right? So there were a lot of characters I could have chosen to play. It could have been the die roller, could have been the demon or the diamond, uh, trollo bones, or the die rake. But instead, I was sent a little something special. I was sent a quackalope. I don't know where he came up with the name. I mean, it's a remarkable design, if I have to say so myself. A duck with protruding antlers out of the front of its skull. I mean, who would not be scared to face down such a beast in a tunnel? Certainly a, uh, a, a fiendish creature that's well-equipped to handle any sort of adventuring party that might venture into its depths. I think. I think that's... I mean, we will see. We'll test it out. So I was sent my own custom Quackalope, which currently is not officially uh, uh, a, a part of the game. Not yet, but I'm pressuring him. So, I'm just, just throwing this out there. If you quack enough, or you, or you make enough noise, or you bug Wes enough, the designer and owner of uh, Die in the Dungeon and Fundamental Games, uh, maybe we'll become a stretch goal, or maybe we'll, we'll like f figure our way in. I, I don't know. I, I think, if, if I'm gonna be honest, I mean, the game's beautiful. Right, there's a lot of good stuff going here. It is a fun, dice-chucking solo experience, but if we're gonna boil it down, this honestly might be... You know you know how you discover the best parts of your game after refinement and playtesting, and they're usually some of the last things you come across. That's the point I'm trying to make. So, the Quackalope may, may, in fact, be the best thing he's ever done. I'm not... I'm not sure... But I'm also not unsure. So, <laughs> so let's go ahead and swing into this game. I want to show off how the gameplay and the mechanics work. Now, like I said, this is, and like the box title and all of the puns throughout the course of the game, uh, emphasize this is a dice rolling game. This is heavily uh, dice centered and dice themed, which is wonderful for people who love dice, love a little bit of randomness, love a little bit of luck. But for those of you that are immediately thinking to yourself, well, I'm, I'm bad at rolling dice now. Certainly not me. I'm, I'm not bad at rolling. If you've heard any rumors, disregard them. Uh, but for those of you that are thinking, I'm, I'm bad at rolling dice, or I don't, I don't love dice-chucking games, there is also a pile of mediation when it comes to this experience. You're not only balancing and leveling up your stats, you also have uh, special dice or pip abilities that you get as you defeat more adventuring parties, you have tokens that are here on the board that add dice to your rolls or allow you to uh, take additional damage or, or reduce some of your stat levels so that you can upgrade and increase the dice that you're rolling. In fact, 
even your main character has four special abilities and two uh, primary abilities that they can use their special action token for. So uh, I will go ahead and go through that and then start working through and showing off this game. Uh, but first, before I get into the flavor text that's here on the board, I was sent, I was sent some flavor text. And you know the rule around flavor text on this channel. If it exists, I, I have to read it. It's going to be really awkward when I just discover, um, it, it's a weird word, it, books, uh, or if a game, well, I guess we have, we have some games coming soon that contain books within them. I'm not quite sure how I'll address that on the channel yet, but for now, we just have a paragraph. You are a powerful creature. Heck yes, I am. Used to being in control. I mean, sometimes. With others in constant fear of you. I mean, the quack is all-powerful. Without warning, you were taken away from your lands by a spell, cast by someone known as only the Die Master, a mighty wizard that even you could not stop. Now, I haven't stopped yet. I'd like this rewritten, please. Now, you find yourself in an unknown dungeon, full of weaker monsters and annoying adventurers. The Die Master has said you will only be released if you eradicate the many heroes that have infiltrated the dungeon. You must destroy those who are seeking treasure and fame at the Die Master's expense. It's a little frustrating that he's summoned us to do his dirty work, but if dirty work must be done, uh, and I am to level up and prove my prowess so that at one point I can, I can in fact take on the Die Master himself, I suppose then that's what must be done. Uh, now, like I said, this is one of my first introductions to the game, and this is a prototype copy of the game. So, keep that in mind as I play. I am sure if I make any mistakes, there will be uh, an anendum at the bottom, which I will pin to the top from Wes, letting you know any of the things I might have messed up along the way, and why I, I should have won if I didn't, right? So keep, so keep that in mind. Uh, we will start here. Oh, I have to go over my player abilities. Quackalope. First player ability. Mega Quack. All hero rolls suffer a minus two after they roll their attacks. A max roll still counts as a hit. So, good to know I can just do a general uh, debuff to the entire adventuring party who are attacking me. This is my favorite one. Duck these dice. Roll each type of dice at the beginning at the same time. If any of their results exactly match a hero's agility score, that hero is defeated immediately. I love that. That is such, I, like I said, the best things get created uh, after a spurt of inspiration moments before your Kickstarter launches. And then I have four special abilities. Uh, Premonition. Choose any two tiles on the dungeon to look at, then return them. This is good because I will flip these as I start adventuring, and underneath them there will be other adventuring parties, uh, challenges that I have to overcome, things like that, right? Uh, I have Impale. If you make a might attack, you may use this ability to add a d20 uh, to your attack. If you roll five or less, roll again. That's nice. Just for when you need a horn to go through a suit of armor. I have Zen. Gain three time. Gain three health. Gain three stat points. This will not cause a die to be upgraded. Now that's key because these dice can be swapped with higher level dice if I buff them. This card cannot do that. As I was reading it, I was thinking to myself, that'd be great if I could just upgrade everything. Gain three victory points. Use only at the beginning of your turn. It's not bad. Okay, and then Unblinking Stare. I love that. I don't know where he came up with that, but I like it. Cancel any effects or attacks generated by multiples of heroes this turn. So that's important to note. Uh, if we are fighting multiple heroes at the same time, there will be buffs that are associated with that. The fighter, the rogue, the wizard, and the cleric all have chaining abilities. So they will all resolve attacks, uh, but they will also add uh, abilities or modifiers if there are more, more than one of them. And then they will also add modifiers if they roll a high enough number to cause us trouble. Uh, so starting here with the turn sequence. Uh, and by the way, this is the adventuring party I am trying to destroy. They have just wandered into the cave. Uh, now, they're going to stand kind of cowardly at the front there while I zoom around and explore and live in the darkness. Uh, like we've said in the rules, 
I have just been teleported into this space, so there are a lot of things I can do to buff myself up. Uh, stat bonuses and then dice rolling bonuses that'll add a dice to my, to my kind of encounter. Uh, the question is, where do I want to go? Now, when I started, I had to put the D20 and the D4 down here on my time and my uh, ability modifier. Then I could assign any of the in-between dice to locations that I wanted. I'd assign the D12 to the might location because I'm a duck with beautiful bronze tips horns. I figure I am the mightiest of all. Uh, also, subtle reference to the Mighty Ducks. I don't know if you've seen it. Uh, and then I have a, a D8 on my agility, a D6 on my magic, and a D10 on my health, the second buffed one there. I think if I'm going head-to-head -head with a bunch of people, I need, to, uh, I need to be a little bit brawny. Time is a possibility to lose. If I run out of time, every time I take an action or regain health, I'll be cycling this D20 down. There are very few things that give me more time. And health is a possibility to lose. If I run out of health, I also lose. Now, stats can be used as a defense with health. So if I need to, I can reduce might, agility, or magic down to one at a minimum, uh, but I lose the opportunity to upgrade them if I've done that. Question is, what do I want to try to get to that I can buff before coming back and facing these guys? And my thinking is might and magic. Magic being my lowest one, might being my highest one, if I could gain both of those tiles, each one adds two to my stat, then I could turn this into a d20 and this into a d8, which would be really nice. So I think I'm going to start heading off in that direction. So starting here, gain one ability point. This will cycle up to two. Uh, optional, rest. I'll lose up to three time to gain the same amount of health. I don't need to do that right now. Lose one time, so this will move down to 19. And these are not the... Uh, the nice, I provided these dice, I had to get custom yellow dice because I had a custom quackalope. Um, and my dice, I'll have to hunt a little bit because they don't count down like the, the nice uh, kind of Magic the Gathering stat dice. Um, lose one time to move your creature to an adjacent unexplored dungeon tile, flip it and complete it. I'm not gonna go here yet. I could go there and save the token, but I really don't need a time token at the moment. I'd rather go explore here and then see if I need it when I make my way back. I think. So I'm gonna move over to this token. Here we have battle magic. Uh, level one, now all the tiles here are gonna be level one, not because I'm bad at solo games. Um, yeah, not because of that. Add the hero's might stat to their magic stat when they attack. Good, so now I'll get to show you how some fighting works. So I will have a level one warrior and I will have a level one magician. Each of these are going to do an attack on me. So we have the combat sequence here. Uh, and they're going to add their stats together until I start destroying them. So you'll see how that works. Uh, if there's a warrior in the party, he's going to make a might roll. There is a warrior in the party. His might is going to be 4 plus 1. Uh, and it doesn't combine here. It only combines on magic. So it'll combine when we do the spell attack. So he's looking for a five, which means a D6 is the dice that he will roll. Now, because he's making a might attack, he's going up against my 12, which means the likelihood of him hitting me is very low. However, a perfect roll uh, will still hit me. So let's see what happens here. A two, a two will not in fact connect with me. Now here's where things become problems. We have seven total magic plus five total might. So we're looking at 12, which means a D12 is going to be the dice that they're going to roll. So this is bad. Uh, and let's see here. A seven. A seven currently will hit my magic stat. So that means I'm going to be taking one damage. And let me check the abilities here. So magic bonus. If the hero is hit with a magic attack of 10 or higher while the wizard is in the party, lose one time in addition to one magic. Okay, and there's no grouping bonuses at the moment because it's just two separate people. So I'm going to take one hit. I'm going for that magic token. So I could take a single hit on magic and keep my health up. But I think for now, I'm going to go ahead and cycle my health down to nine and keep my magic stat high. 
because uh, if this gets too low, then I'm in a position where even though I get a bonus, it won't upgrade my die. And I really want that upgraded because that means because that means I roll better moving forward. Okay, uh, they've done their might attack and their magic attack. Now it's my turn to do an attack. I will be going up against one of their defenses. So currently they're working as a party. And right now, I mean, my might's the best, but their agility sucks. And I've got a solid eight on agility. So I think I'm gonna go for that. I think I'm gonna roll a d8 and do my very best to get above a three. And I don't think I'm gonna use any of my special abilities at the moment. Um, yeah, not yet. Seven, that will in fact hit them. I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of our wizard here. Beautiful, now this guy's gonna make a might attack uh, with a four, meaning he's still rolling. Oh, he's rolling a d4 this time. So his odds are a little bit worse. Two, two going up against my might. That is not gonna do it good, sir. I'm going to do a straight on brute force magic attack up against his one. I just don't need to roll a one. A six will be a critical hit. I smash him into pieces. I use my horns. I actually impale underneath his helmet, knocking it back and up. It kind of rips the side of his nose just a little bit. He's sort of staring at me. Looks kind of like a dumb brute and I just headbutt him. I don't even use my horns for this. I just full on duck, headbutt him in the face. Nose kind of crumples in a little bit, he just drops. He's probably knocked out, but no one's coming to help him, so even if he's just knocked out for the time, he's still gonna die in the dungeon. I'm sorry, it's the name of the game. We're gonna keep moving forward, uh, and because I did two people there, I get to move this die to a two. When I hit six, I will gain a one pip benefit, meaning I could add one to some of my dice as I resolve combat. I'm gonna keep pressing forward. I wanna go here to this tile, let's, uh Flip this up. Dominion Revolt. If you have any Dominions, destroy one of them or lose one health. I do not have any Dominions. I'm about to get a Dominion. Uh, Dominions are little beings or creatures who worship or celebrate the deity that is the Golden Quackalope, right? Or whatever monster you're exploring with. Clearly, none of them hold a candle uh, or a feather up to this beast but they will join with you and uh, you can throw them or raid with them or use them to whatever purposes you might desire. Now, this Dominion here is coming over onto my board. I will flip him. He is a level eight Dominion, so I could chuck him. He attaches and just starts stabbing into the like thigh of a creature that I need to face. Let's see here. Magic, gain two magic, upgrade if this exceeds your max. That's awesome. Moving forward, magic. Upgraded by two, we're moving up to a D8. I am suddenly becoming powerful. Let's continue pressing forward. Let's go get this might stat here. Uh, timeless, when you are hit this battle, lose one time. That's not any fun. I should probably just not get hit this battle. Now we have a rogue. So let's pull him on and we have a wizard. So they're gonna add their stats together. There are no grouping effects, so there will only be effects if they can hit high enough. Starting with the rogue here, we're going to be doing agility. Uh, five is gonna be his highest stat, so we're looking for, uh, he's going up against an eight. That's gonna be a hard nut to crack. Six is going to hit. Remember what I said about him? Yeah, uh, I'm going to take, I'm gonna take a pip of damage. Let's reduce this down a little bit. I'm only at eight, that's not bad, and I'm not upgrading damage anyway, so I can take some hits as long as I upgrade my other die. Uh, moving over to our Magician. We're looking at a seven, so he's gonna roll a D8 here. And he's going to need to do, he's going to need to do an eight to hit. A one is not, I am so sorry, sir. He kind of holds his staff out and you just see like ambient blue mist trail out of it and the rogue kind of looks over like, dude, I, I met you at the tavern. You told me you were an adventurer. I, 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 and then the duck. The duck's gonna swing in with a might attack. We are rolling a d12. We're going straight for that magician because I don't like him, because he's bad at magic, because he lied to the rogue. I feel, you know, before I kill them both, I wanna at least give the rogue, rogue some satisfaction. Uh, a 10, a 10 is going to grab the staff with my beak, swing it around, and impale it through the neck of the wizard. Seems reasonable. I'm, look, 
don't blame me, it's the game. Maybe. I, I might be adding some of my own flavor text to the game. But I think it's all official. There's a Quackalope here. Look, I'm just excited. Okay. Rogue is going to take a swing at me. Rolling a d4 this time. Looking at my agility score. Two is not, in fact, going to do it. I am so powerful. Going to fight him. Uh, let's use... Let's take Rogue out with his own ability. Let's do agility up against him. Rolling a d8 against a four. This is a dumb move. Uh, that was a bad move. Um, oh, and I lost time. I got hit. I got hit once. So 19. Oh, and I lost time moving. So 19, 18, 17, 16, 15 is where I should be. Hmm. And I believe I just missed. I just missed him. Luckily, he's going to miss me as well. Um, I... I thought that I was quick enough. I kind of like let out a squawk, waddled to the side a little bit, and then dove at him with my bill. It didn't work. Didn't work. He does, in fact, miss me, though, which means now I'm going to do a full straight-up might attack. Uh, so we are rolling a d12 here. And we're going to... You know, the agility attack didn't work in pinning him, but it did get him between my horns, so now I'm just going to shake my head really, really fast and really, really hard. A 9. A 9 is, I am so sorry, sir, going to remove you from the game. This is going to pip up to 4. We are slowly gaining abilities, and I get to move on to this tile. Let's go ahead and get that might stat. So this is coming over here. That will upgrade me by 2, which means I pull over a d20 and put myself at 14. Amazing. This has been spent. This tile gets flipped. Oh, I also was forgetting. I should be up to four here, and I should now be down to 14. But that's all right, because all I need to do is trail back there and murder a small adventuring party. Except this is a lot of people. So, level one. Focus. Gain up to two ability. If at max already, use an ability for free instead. I am at max ability, so I can use one of my abilities for free. It's pretty nice. Uh, the problem is I am facing one of every type of hero here. So a wizard, a cleric, a rogue, and a warrior. Now, here's the interesting thing. The cleric has to be dealt with first because... For each cleric in your party beyond the first, lose one ability point. You cannot use ability points before this occurs. Now, luckily, they're not grouped. But while cleric is in this party, they must be defeated first by any might, agility, or magic attacks. Now, all the others are going to be looking for 10s, 15s, and 10s. So I'll keep an eye on that to see if any of their special abilities trigger. So we're going to start here with our warrior. He has... 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, meaning he's rolling a d10 to try to take me out. Let's see what he gets. A 1. I am so sorry, sir. You try your best to pick up your hammer, and you can't get it off the ground. People are looking at you. They're making fun of you. Uh, a boot falls off of your head. It's really embarrassing. Moving over here to the rogue, that he has 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, also rolling a d10. But he is going up against my agility, which is an 8. So, a 9 is going to hit me. I think I'm going to take down my agility by 1. I'm going to move down to a 7, because I don't see myself making it over there to actually upgrade that. That's what we're going with. Moving over to the wizard, who is going to be rolling magic. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Same thing, rolling a 10, going against an 8. That is going to be a five. That is not going to connect. Now it is my turn, and I get to use one ability for free. And I think I'm going to do a full-on duck these dice. I think that's reasonable. Let me make sure this tile gain up to two ability. If at max already, use an ability for free instead. I'm using the heck out of duck these dice. Ten, a six, a twelve, a four... Uh, and a d20. And I am looking... A d20 and an 8. 
and I am looking for any of their agility. So if I hit their agility score, fours, twos, and ones, there's a one, there's a three, five, six, sixteen. That one is gonna hit though. I cannot defeat any of these other guys until I defeat the cleric. Darn. So they're all protected. So I go striking out, just bill flying all over the place, feathers flustered, wings spread, and the cleric steps in front and, uh, and protects or defends her companions. Um, and it is, it is onto their turn. Well, that sucks. I was really hoping I'd, uh, I'd pull more than that. All right, moving over here, back to the might attack. Still a nine, still rolling a d10, still trying to hit me on a perfect score. He's not gonna count. Darn it. That is going to be a 10. That is not only a perfect score, but also is a perfect might score. So that's going to take me down by two. Let's move this down to a 12. Instead of taking more damage, let's just cycle our might downward. Now I won't downgrade my dice, so I'm already as high buffed as I can on that. So that's all right. Uh, moving up to agility, same thing, gonna be rolling a d10. Four is not going to hit my agility. And over here with the uh, Warlock looking for eights. Uh, nine. Nine is in fact going to hit me. That's going to do one damage. And I will take this down to a seven, but that is as far down as I can tick it because I am trying to upgrade my magic ability. On to me. Let's destroy... I should have used the Mega Quack, maybe. Possibly. Let's take on a Might Attack versus the party here, meaning I am rolling a full-on d20. A ten is going to be able to get them because they are at a nine. That will, in fact, take out the cleric, which means I'm now in a position to deal with everyone else. But they're gonna go through their full sequence again. So here, they're debuffed a little bit though. So might is two. Might is going to be a total of four, five, six, seven, which means he's not rolling a d10, he's rolling a d8. That is not gonna hit me, that is gonna be a five. Rogue, looking at four, five, six, seven as well. So rolling a d8 alongside there. A two is not gonna hit me. And the wizard, six, seven, eight, nine, still rolling a d10, but I'm sure he's gonna fail. One, like I said, pathetic. Weak, weak creatures, I laugh at their misery. D20, might attack, going straight for them. That is going to be a seven. Their might is currently four, five, six, seven. I'm going to spend, I'm gonna spend one might, so I'm gonna debuff this to 11, to buff myself by one, giving me enough to actually take out one of their heroes, and I'm gonna take out their wizard here. So remove him from the game. Uh, their big beefy guy is gonna be rolling four, five, six, so a D6 against me this time. Not gonna do it. It's gonna be a laughing stock. Uh, three is not gonna be handled. And then agility on a six as well. Looking at my seven. Four, that is not going to do it either. Let's just wipe him out. Let's keep rolling my D20. Let's keep punching him in the face. Going up against their six. Uh, 18 is going to be more than enough to handle one of these guys. So take him out. I actually turned him into a putty. Um, he's now just a paste. Uh, and we're gonna be rolling a d4 against my might stack. Uh, three, he actually strikes and it, it hits the plumage of my kind of breastplate, which is just a pile of feathers. Sinks in, kind of looks a little bit confused. I lower my horn down slowly. I'm gonna get a little risky with it. I'm gonna roll a d8. I'm gonna try to take him out with magic because thematically, I wanna see this happen. I shouldn't do things. I shouldn't do things. He's gonna roll. He's gonna roll again. Every time I try. Every time I'm like thematically, I'd like to see you know the 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 magic zoom between my horns and this blue glowing energy create a flowing ball that sort of slowly absorbs into. It. You didn't get to see that though. That's not how it played out. Uh, three is not going to hit me. All right. I will do a might attack. I will. I will lean into my strengths. We have. A nine. A nine is, in fact, going to do this guy in. So what he doesn't know is, like, how you can wiggle your ears. I can do the same thing with my horns, and it's, it's actually pretty powerful. So it just kind of crunches them in just a little bit, almost like pincers. 
So I just kind of wiggle them a bit and just the edges of them, just an inch or so, spire into his temples and then pop back out. Just kind of looks confused, slightly dumber. Not that much dumber. He was already pretty... Look, I don't mean to insult him, but he wears a tin can on his head for a reason. And he stumbles off, head fell, head, you know, hat falls off, and a die rolls out. All right, we're in a good position. Now, I have an ability here that is going to allow me to look at some tiles. I think I'm going to do that after I finish getting my magic here. So let's continue pushing forward. Flipping this tile. Battle magic. Add the hero's might stat to their magic stat when they attack. And this is a level 2 tile. So we will be pulling out a level 2 magician. See? It's a level 2 rogue, not magician. And a level 2 warrior. Which means these guys are going to be a little bit more difficult to deal with. Okay, starting with the warrior here. Uh, total power level of 7. is going to be rolling a D8. I'm still not really concerned about it. I got an 11. 3 is not going to do it. So sorry, good sir. Uh, and then the magician is going to be rolling uh, 10. So looking for a D10. Going up against my magic, which is currently a 7. Uh, a 9. A 9 is going to hit. Uh, and is there a bonus to that? Nope, 10 or higher is where the bonus is going to be. 9's going to hit. I'm going to take the damage to my health. So I'm dropping down to 7. And I should have cycled my stat down to 13 here. Because I'm running out of time. Because I moved in there, and then I moved back around to this area. Um, let's go head to head. Let's use my strength stat again. In fact, their agility is pretty nice. Let's use all of my action bonus, because I'm going to get some back as I travel back the other way. Let's do another duck these dice. So, add all of these into my hand, and I'm looking for threes or fours. So let's see here. Let's see what I can do. Two, one, two, four. There we are. That is what I'm looking for. And, let's see, I take out this behemoth. So this time... They did not successfully duck these dice. Uh, wizard casting a spell of eight against my seven. So looking at a D8. Uh, that seven is going to tie me, which is not going to hurt me. Uh, and I'm going to do a straight up secondary might attack. Um, let's finish this off. Let's not play games anymore. A5 is going to be enough. Goodbye, good sir. Okay, moving in. Oh, add the hero's might stat to their magic stat when they attack. This should have been a 9. So I should have actually rolled a d10. Let's, let's fix that. Let's resolve that. Just in case. A 1. No, the, the, game, the game there is saying that I have made absolutely no mistakes in this gameplay. So don't worry about it. Uh, pulling this magic coupon here. That will upgrade my magic from a d8 to a d... 10 and it will put me at 7 8 9 total awesome i'm slowly getting beefier and beefier and we're moving into this tile here collapse make a might check if the result is less than eight you lose two health luckily i have all the might i need we're rolling a d20 avoiding a one so i'm now at five health um, and I lose a time because I moved in there, right? So I'm down to 12, but I gain one pip here. So I think I'm going to use my ability here. I think I'm going to use, oh, I need to move one more time before I can use it. So where do I want to go? Let's go get that additional time. Let's move in there before we face some of these bad guys. I have the D8. Could always swing up to one of these spots to try to collect one of them as well. This one would be nice to get, honestly. So let's move here. Let's take this time token. Raises me back up to 14. And then let's flip this tile and see what happens. Magic trap. Make a magic check. If the result is less than 6, you lose 2 health. Like I said before, luckily, uh, I 
I never roll less than six. So for magic, I'm gonna be rolling a D10 less than six. So I could, I could buff that. I could buff that, that is a five. I need, I need a six or higher, right? If it is less than six. So all I need to do is buff it by one. Oh, and I defeated, I defeated four and then two, so another six. So this should be, two should give me a buff of one and then there should be four here. So I will spend this pip that I have to raise that to a six to prevent myself from taking that additional damage. Uh, question is now, where do I wanna go? Do I feel like I'm beefy enough to take on these guys? I mean, I've upgraded everything I wanna upgrade. I have a bonus token here. I could use some additional, some additional resources because I'd love to do a duck these dice and to hack on them. But I also have things like the Unblinking Stare, the Zen, uh, the Impale sounds like a lot of fun to use. Let's move a few more tiles and then let's go face them. Let's move down and go ahead and collect another one of our buff tokens. So moving into this tile. Hunted, if you are hit by an agility attack this turn, lose one health and one agility. So we're moving in there. This is moving down to 13. This is moving up to three, which is enough to use my impale attack. This time we're facing a duo. So we're facing two rogues, which means their special ability will come into play here. For each rogue in the party beyond the first, the heroes perform one additional agility attack for the first round of combat. So they're gonna get to do two agility attacks on me at a hit of eight each. So they're rolling a D8 against my own personal D8. So sevens and above will hit me. Three is not gonna do it. They get one more attack. Three again is not gonna do it. Now it is my turn to impale one of them on the tip of my horn and then use him as a club to swing around and knock the other player out. I'm gonna be doing a might attack because if you're impaling anyone, you might as well do it with as much ferocity and might as you can take. Going up against a four, that is going to be a 19. That is more than enough to fully impale one of these figures, not just on the tip of my horn, but also kind of dangling with one arm resting, uh, sort of, sort of comfortably on one of the branches of my extended horns. I never said I wasn't a monster. Look, it's, I, again, just playing thematically. Four, going up against me, rolling a d4, looking against, so a perfect hit. Nope, two is not gonna do it. Second might attack, I'm using the friend of his buddy as a club to knock him out. Uh, 15 is plenty to swing and knock him to the ground. Move on to this tile. Let's continue pressing forward. I'm gonna gain this little uh, this little dominion, and then I'm gonna flip this tile. Righteousness. If you are hit by a might attack, lose one health and one might. And this is going to be a duo of armored men. So two ones here. And they're going to have some additional might. They're also in a group. So the fighters. For each fighter in the party beyond the first, the hero's might and agility attack rolls gain a plus one bonus after rolling. So they've got eights. They're gonna be rolling a D8 with a plus one ability bonus and the ability if they hit me. That is going to be a three. A three is not gonna connect with my might. I am gonna show them what true power is like rolling this D20 again. A nine. A nine is in fact going to be able to hit them. You see how these have these big, uh, these big dice shaped clubs? When I take one of those in my beak, I rip it out and then I sling it back at them and use his own club to kind of dent in the side of his helmet. It dented in farther than it should because there's supposed to be a skull on the other side of it. I don't know, it looked like it, it, it just collapsed. That's all I'm saying. Moving here, he's gonna be rolling a D4. If he gets a perfect hit though, he's gonna do a lot of damage, and he does. And he does get a perfect hit. So, if you are hit by an agility attack this turn, oh, it's agility. No, it's here. If you're hit by a might attack this turn, lose one health and one might. Might is going down to 10. I'm slowly becoming weaker and weaker. And health is going down to four. That is not good news for me. I think this might be the last tile I go to before I try to face off because I feel pretty good about the buffs that I have. Oh, and I gained, I gained this, which is going to go to a two. So I have two pips that I can use to modify. 
Let's go ahead and crush this guy. Let's be done with him. A three is not in fact gonna be done with him, but if I got it up to a five, I would be and I won't have to potentially get hit by his powerful attack again. And I think, I think I'm okay with that. So toss this down. I'm gonna use both of those, just get rid of them uh, to destroy him. That'll add two pips to this level. This guy's popping out. And I believe I should be maybe at 12. I don't know. I might I might be missing these time things every now and then just as I'm paying attention to the rest of it. But 12 there. Now I'm going to go face off against the adventuring party because I, I feel good about my odds. So moving in, time goes down to 11. Okay, this is going to stay right where it is. So even if I didn't, wasn't supposed to get it, I did get it that time. I could heal if I wanted. I could spend time, spend three time to gain the same amount of health. I'm going to do that. So I'm going to move this all the way down to a eight. And I'm going to gain three health here. So four, five, six, seven. So I'm back up to pretty decent health. We're going to be facing this. Now, I'm not sure what this tile is. This is a level one uh, epic party encounter. So, while you cannot use abilities while the cleric is in the party, and there are two clerics in the party. Good. Because I've always said to myself, uh, I would like to uh, rip apart two clerics to make, you know, the gods know that I, I spit on them. Uh, and then, and then deal with a die-faced rogue. So, clerics, okay, and one rogue here. Interesting, so the clerics are gonna work as a little bit of a buffer as I start attacking here. Okay, interesting. Let's, let's see if we're actually able to make do with this. Now, I could use some of my higher abilities if I wanted. I have the unblinking stare, which I think is a hilarious ability but I cannot use them until I get rid of the clerics. So starting here, the rogue is going to do an attack. That is gonna be four plus 16. He's rolling a d20 going up against my seven. That is going to be a seven, which is surprisingly low enough that it doesn't hit. Instead, it ties, so he is going to miss there. And the, uh, this is a super powered uh, badass rogue. Let's see here, the assassin. The assassin cannot be defeated until all other heroes are defeated. When the assassin is the only hero, gain plus two to the might and agility. Disgusting. Critical strike. If the heroes succeed on an agility attack, deal one additional agility damage. Horrible. And the cleric. For each cleric in your party beyond the first, lose one ability point. You cannot use ability points before this occurs. So I'm down to three. Which means I need to get rid of them and then use impale. Okay. I think I know my script at this point. I... I'm going to be using my might attack to try to take out one of those clerics. Their might is going to be 10. Ooh, is that the best bet? I think it is because it is my highest die. But I could use magic. I think I'm going to use magic maybe. Six. No. Still, still a little bit not on the good side. 10, 12, 14, 16. I can do this. 13, let's modify it. 13, let's drop this to 8, 15. I'm looking 10, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. 15, 16, 17 if I drop this to 6 and I take care of one of them. Let's not do that. Let's leave this at 10 and let's add a dice to it. Let's start by throwing one of our die minions into the mix. So I'm going to be rolling a d8 to add to the score. A 4, 13, uh, 14, 15, 16, 17. That is going to be enough. I'm going to take out one of these clerics. Okay, on to them. They're going to be doing an attack with agility. We're looking at 6, looking at 24. So agility of 18, 19. That's going to be enough. I don't know what to tell you. That will, in fact, be enough. I'm going to take my health down by one. So we're popping down to a six. Okay. And that was a successful agility attack. 
Uh, one additional agility damage. So this is going to pop down to a six as well. Let's take on, let's finish that cleric. We've made a mockery of the first one. Let's strip the robe off the other one uh, and pin them up onto a banister. Yeah, uh, it's a little, it's a little cocked there. I'm going to roll it again. It was a 16, but it was a little cocked. Uh, the gods are with me. 18. Uh, gods are with me. The right gods are with me, clearly. I quack into the summoning distance. Uh, the robe sort of flies back, revealing a scrawny, withered old man. And I use a horn to just slap him across the face. He goes down without, without much trouble at all. So now all I have are the rogue and the, uh, the more advanced rogue here. So, they're going to get to go, again with an agility attack. Oh, I didn't do the second agility attack. I only did the first one. Let's resolve that. A seven, a seven still, a seven would have hit that turn, which means this would have dropped to five and then four because it would have taken both there instead of one of my health. Darn it. Now they're attacking again. Four, looking at 20s. Okay. Eight, eight is going to hit me again. Let's drop my health by two instead. Dropping health down to four. Another attack, swinging in. Oh, a 12. A 12 is going to hit. Let's drop this to three. And let's drop my health to three. Let's keep things let's keep things kind of balanced here. Now is my chance to do some actual damage. Um, and I think... I think I'm going to do my special ability now. No, I'm not. I'm going to roll I'm going to roll my might attack against the rogue here. Might is going to be a power of 12. I need higher than 12 or I'm going to add my d10 to it. An 8 is not going to work. Let's throw a diminion at him. I kind of chuck a little chubby guy out of a patch sort of like a Pikmin type of thing. Launch him high into the air. We're looking for a d10 here. Where are thou? Okay. 8, 9, 10, 11. The minion soars into the air, lands on the guy's shoulder, starts stabbing him in the shoulder, but it is not yet enough to do damage. So I let out a beckoning scream, reducing my might by 2, down to 8. That spurs on my little friend, and he slashes him across the throat, and the Dominion has taken care of that rogue. Now, his might and his agility are going to go up by two, so we're looking at 18 and 12. He's going to do a single attack against me, rolling with his agility. 18 is going to be enough to hit. So, drop this to two. Let's drop it down to one. Let's go the whole way down to one on agility there, and I'm going to summon with my, uh, with my abilities I'm going to do Impale, which I've been waiting to do since the very start of the game. If you make a Might attack, you may use this ability to add a d20 roll to your attack. If you roll five or less, roll again. And on the bottom of these cards, there are little bits of flavor text that you're supposed to read when you do the attack to spur on your victory. And mine specifically says, Quack. 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 2d20. 16 and an 11, both combining together, two mightable, mighty horns swinging wildly in this crippling dungeon. I first slash across his face, blinding him, and then the second horn comes swinging back around. It barely misses. He steps back, stumbling onto the ground, leaving himself vulnerable. I waddle up on my two, my two little duck feet, and I gaze into his eyes, letting out a resounding quack as my bill closes over his face, crushing his die-shaped skull and completing my mission. Cool. I think I I think I won or or I cheated. There's a ch I mean, look, Wes, if you're if you're going through this, letting me know all of the things I messed up. First off, I'm sorry. I tried. I'll be better by Tuesday. I'm studying. This is part of the studying process, but also don't take this victory away from me. Like we need this. I mean, I don't win a lot. So, if you could, and it's a quackalope. Quackalope should win. So, maybe don't, but... Whatever the case, I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. I'm excited to bring this game to the channel. This is just a fun uh, dice chucking and dice mitigation game. Um, I don't know what to say. I love the art style. I think the dungeon crawling's fun and interesting. It, it is fun when you get two players on the board as well, because you're both now exploring for resources and trying to take out the same adventuring party before the other player. 
Uh, and there's a Quackalope. I mean, that could be, like, it's not, it's not official. But if we bug him enough, I, look, anything's possible. At this point, at this point, I think the front cover of this box could even be changed to have a Quackalope on it. Now, the likelihood of that happening, almost none. But the dream of that happening, now that's a thing worth fighting for. Whatever the case, thank you for joining me. Thank you. I hope you've had a good time. I'm going to go edit this video and get it posted for you so you can see this game. It comes out, like I said, in about two days. So hit that link down in the comment section down below. Uh, swing over. Uh, give Wes some love and support. Give Fundamental Games your attention. And when this comes out on Tuesday, if you are into dice-chucking solo games, um, I hope your attention is fully peaked. If you've made it to this point in the video, uh, I, I assume, at least to some degree, it is. So, uh, all that being said, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing. Get out and play some games. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.